Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to Cornerstone tonight. We're so glad to see you. Glad you're here. Let's all stand together and we'll open up with a song. We're going to sing The Way of the Cross Leads Home. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. I must needs go on in the blood-sprinkled way, the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the heights of lime, where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross leads home, the way of the cross leads home, it is sweet to know as I onward go, the way of the cross leads home. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world, to walk in it nevermore. For my Lord says, come and I seek my home, where he waits at the open door. The way of the cross leads home, the way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go, the way of the cross leads home. That's good singing. Now we'll have an opening prayer by Brother Brent. God, as we meet tonight, we just pray that your presence would be among us. We just pray that you'd be an honor and glorified in all that's said and done. And as our kids' ministries take place, we just pray that uh, you would work in their hearts also. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hopefully everyone got a prayer list. I do not have any updates or additions at this time. But we are going to read a missionary prayer letter. And tonight's is from the McGeorge family, our missionaries to Nehru. And it reads, well, praise the Lord, we have moved. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a bumpy road along the way, but the Lord got us through. At the time of writing this letter, we have been in the new house a week. We got our two 20-foot shipping containers up here this past Wednesday, and the great unpacking has begun. We had to get a crane up to the old house this past Monday to get both our containers down on the road and accessible by side loader truck. All the cranes on the island were down, so Sheck, the Chinese construction company who is building Nehru's new port, brought one of their cranes up to help us out. The crane and side load trucks cost us about $1,500, and we are thankful for your financial support that enabled us to meet these needs. The scale on the train told us that our two containers weighed a total of 11 tons, which made me think that it's is not often during a move you get a metric tonnage weight to the stuff you accumulate through life and ministry at a particular location. The new house is livable, but I'm still working on tilling the shower and getting the plumbing complete. It's not pretty, but we are getting there and making headway slowly. Church services at the community had um, have worked well. Unfortunately, during the move, we lost a few families, which was disappointing. We had two visitors, our first two services at the new location, one of whom, James, has also come to Bible study and has a desire to learn the Word of God. He goes to Catholic Church Sunday morning and then comes to our morning service once he gets home on the bus. He has a mixed church background. Please pray for his salvation. We have some issues with our old landlord regarding the move. 
We never had a lease agreement with the old house and came to find out that legally the custom here is that whatever gets attached to the house pretty much becomes the landlord's when the renter moves out. This means the outside church bathroom and the church roof area were both left behind and the church is out the 13500 that it spent to make those additions. We had hoped to meet face to face with our landlord to try to work the situation out, but she would not meet and all our efforts to explain our case to her have fallen on deaf ears. The bathroom was a concrete block construction and not very movable, but we had hoped to take down the church roof and reuse the material at our new location, but we were unable to do so. I called my landlord's pastor to visit her and plead our case, but there had been no has been no change. Would you pray for the Lord to work on Edna's heart and resolve the situation for us? We are glad for the new house and new location. We just signed our 20-year lease for the house last night and are looking forward to a more certain future for our ministry and family. The last few months have been hard on our family, our ministry, and us physically, spiritually, and emotionally. At times, I felt more like a construction worker than a pastor or missionary. Our boys have been a big help in preparing meals while we've been working and then working hard during the move. We feel we have been sustained by the Lord in your prayers on our behalf and pray that you would continue to lift us up before the throne in the days of hair. Some prayer requests to remember. One, that work in Nehru to have visitors and grow numerically and spiritually and resolution with our landlord, Edna. So let's have a quick word of prayer that that situation with their, their roof would get resolved. Dear God, we just thank you for the McGeorge family and their willingness to serve in Nehru. We're just thankful for all our missionaries that have answered your call. We just pray that you would use them, give them wisdom, direction. And we just pray for your will to be done uh, with their old location and that it it's in your plan for them to be able to make use of the money they spent on their old roof that uh, you would just work in Edna's heart and work it out to where they'd be able to take that with them. If not, just give them peace about it and they move on. We just pray with their ministry that you would just uh, give them souls, give them visitors. Pray for this James that uh, has a mixed church background, going to the Catholic church and their church. You just give him uh, the realization of the truth of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just be with our service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, looks like we might have a little trouble with the lyrics up there, so we'll switch it up, go to song number 195. Let's turn in our song books. <clears throat> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's all stand together. We'll sing together all four verses of song 195. This will be our handshake song, so after the second verse and chorus, we'll all turn around and shake hands. Song number 195, here we go. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the second, for my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, for my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Turn around and shake hands.
All right, let's join me on the third verse, on the fourth verse, I'm sorry. Nothing but the blood. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's good singing. And you may be seated. All right. Well, good evening. Good, good to see everybody here tonight. And uh, we got quite a few announcements. Let's get through these quickly. Um, thank you for everyone that come out, came out to the blood drive. Go ahead and take that one down. And I want to remind you that the devotionals are in the back, as well as the Baptist Times magazines. Um, really good, really good magazine for you to read. I want to encourage you to grab some flyers um, from the back counter there. It still, is, it still is good because we have the, uh, the Easter cantata on there being advertised. And so make sure you grab some flyers. And on the back, it's just getting the word out that bus ministry is coming. It doesn't have any uh, times or dates on there because that's TBA. But we want people to go to our website where they can find more information about the bus ministry. So please pass those out. We're excited about that. And then if you haven't done so already, would you please fill out your Faith Promise uh, card with how much you are pledging by faith to give towards missions this year. And if you would, turn that into your Sunday school teacher. Uh, we need to get that done pretty soon, so please do that. And then on the announcement list, we've already told you the ladies are very active. We do one breakfast a month, and we think we're doing well. These ladies have a ladies' conference, mother-daughter banquet, and a lot, a lot else. So uh, ladies' conference at Lighthouse Baptist Church. The sign-up sheet is in the back lobby. I heard that was a great, great uh, conference to go to, so please sign up for that. Um, there's an overnight rally. Uh, Mother-daughter banquet It's May 14th at 10 a.m. It's $7 per adult and teen and $4 per, per child. And then there's going to be a table, where's the wife? A table set up in the back the lobby that they could buy tickets. There's going to be a ticket table where you can go ahead and uh, pre-purchase your tickets. So if you have any other questions, please see my wife for more details. Um, we are adding a Saturday saturation this Saturday because the pastor missed the one we were supposed to two weeks ago. So we're going to add a sat Saturday saturation this Saturday, the 23rd, at 9.30 a.m. And I don't want to promise Tim's donuts, but I think he's back in town, and it's not Easter Sunday anymore, so I think we should have, we should have Tim's donuts if you come, all right? Uh, that's all I'll say about that. Um, the VBS sign-up sheet's in the back of the lobby. Um, we have a good turnout. Thank you so much for everyone who signed up. Uh, we would never turn away help. So if you want to uh, sign up still, you can do that. We would welcome any help that we can get. Let's see. Trustees meeting. Is there a trustee meeting this upcoming Sunday? And what time is that? 445? There's a trustee meeting at 445 this Sunday, April 24th. And let's see here. Uh, Miss Elaine Hand is home and recovering, um, but she's in a lot of pain and has a limited motion. So she uh, is in need of meals. So if, if we could as a church, if, if you want to help out with meals for Miss Elaine Hand, uh, if you could see, is there someone that organizes that? Is it Miss Elaine, Elaine Hand that organizes it? Okay, is there a plan B? My wife, okay. If you are a lady or a man that wants to prepare a meal, or buy fried chicken or something and bring to her. Please see my wife so we can coordinate meals for Miss Elaine Hand as she recovers. I think that's it. Oh, I want to run, run down the, uh, the schedule for uh, this Sunday. We have Rebecca and Levon Haig with us, candidating for assistant pastor. And Sunday school, we're going to be combining all the uh, Sunday school classes in here in the auditorium. Um, then Levon will bring the message for Sunday school. Of course, we have the cantata uh, April 24th during the 11 o'clock hour, and then Levon's going to be preaching for us uh, that Sunday evening. Right after the service, we're going to have a um, ice cream and cookie social. You just come with a sweet tooth, and we'll provide everything else. We want you to uh, spend some time to get to know he and his family, 
And so we're going to give you time to do that. But right before we have the ice cream social and cookie social, we're going to have a question answer time. All right, so right after the Sunday evening service and before the ice cream social, we're going to have a time where you could ask Levon uh, or Rebecca some questions. Okay, so if you have a question you'd like to ask them, uh, please do so Sunday night after the service in between uh, the service and the ice cream social. If you have a question and you know you don't like standing up in front of people or whatever, I encourage you to write it out, write your question out, and you can turn it into me or the deacons or, or we want you to have feedback. So if you want a question asked, please do so. Um, write it down and turn it in and we'll make sure your question gets asked, okay? So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much for all the, the men who last Saturday uh, worked on the bus barn. Appreciate that. And a lot of hard work was put into that. I really appreciate you doing that, giving up your time on Saturday to do that. So, all right, good deal. Thank you. Sorry, what? Did you have another announcement? Oh, okay. I'm glad she, I'm glad she brought that up. Several people have asked, and without going in too much detail, uh, we are no longer having Isla's uh, wedding shower. Um, Anthony and Isla's wedding has been canceled, so I don't know too much information. Um, I just know that Anthony was pretty upset, and so just please be in prayer for both of them as they as they figure out um, what to do next. So there's no more need for a shower since the wedding's canceled. So please be in prayer for them. All right, let's pray for our offering. Our God, as we collect this money, we just pray that it would honor and glorify you, and we will use it to further your work. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand once again. We'll sing His Name is Wonderful. If you need it in the songbook, it's 101. <clears throat> Song number 101. His Name is Wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he is the mighty King, master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all. Right. We have uh, Re Levon and Rebecca Haig with us tonight, and he's candidating for assistant pastor. And um, I want to have him come up here. Go ahead and come up here, Levon. And before you get into your message tonight, if you would just give us a brief um, salvation testimony, maybe introduce your family as well, and just tell us a little bit about you, and then just whatever the Lord laid on your heart to preach. All right. Well, good, good evening. I hope this uh, is on here. This is on. Am I, I'm going to walk away. Yep, it's working. Okay, good. I'm not used to these, uh, this type of mic, but that's all right. It, as long as it works, good. Amen. And uh, my name is Levon Haig. That's L-E-V-O-N. And, uh, and my wife, Rebecca, here uh, in the front row in the burgundy uh, there. That's my wife, Rebecca. And we got three kids, uh, Levi, Caitlin, and Zachary. Uh, so you, I'm sure most of you got to meet them already. Um, 
they're in kids club right now, so I hope they're having a good time. They think it's all, maybe it is all play, I don't know, but uh, anytime you say play in my son's, my oldest son's head, he's thinking, let's go, let's go play. Uh, my youngest one, he's, he's always out there working with me, doing whatever, so he's, uh, and then my oldest one's sitting in there watching TV. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, sometimes that's the way it goes, but um, so that's them, that's Levi, Caitlin, and Zachary, uh, but it's good to, good to be here tonight, and uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we had to kick uh, Leah and Colin out of the house for the, for the night, uh, no, I'm just kidding, over at the Parsonage, but uh, thank you for having us over there at the Parsonage, and um, we just appreciate, appreciate y'all and, and uh, what you do here. So um, my testimony, um, been raised in church all my life, a lot like my wife. Uh, she grew up in a Christian school. I was more uh, along the public, uh, public school lines. And uh, so I, got to, I, I uh, had a lot of opportunity f- for myself to uh, minister to, to kids that were my age as I grew up through high school. Um, but as we see uh, the day approaching, we see that the, the, Christ- the public school is just uh, further and further going away, uh, definitely from... Uh, anything that the Bible teaches. And so uh, we are homeschooling our three kids right now and uh, seeing the blessings from that uh, just flow right through them as they learn scripture and uh, learn along the way. Um, I was saved when I was about 10 years old. Uh, my aunt and uncle uh, moved from Minnesota. We're, we're from Michigan. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. We're from Michigan, um, up by Lansing area. Um, a lot, a lot of industrial type jobs, so that's what I do now. I, I work in a steel factory. Um, my wife has done a little bit of uh, 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 things in a smaller school setting, and so uh, that's where we're from, around the Lansing, Michigan area, the capital there, and um, uh, uh, currently attending uh, uh, Baptist Church, Gospel Light Baptist Church in Hastings, which is another smaller town west of Lansing, so that's where we're at. And, um, but along the lines of our testimony, um, I was saved when I was 10. She was, uh, my wife was saved when she was about 13 years old and uh, just seeing the Lord work in and through our lives. Uh, we actually met in Bible college up in Gaylord. And so we, we uh, I had two sisters that went there first and they were uh, bugging me to come. And um, so I finally got done with my other, uh, I was just doing a short program at Michigan State and moved on up to uh, Gaylord at Grace Baptist College, met my wife there, and uh, like instantly for me, maybe not for her, but it was instant for me, and uh, just um, seeing how her, uh, she was just always had a love for the ministry uh, from there forward, and so we both, uh, we ran different bus routes uh, at one time, and um, I think I think she ran the longest bus route, and I ran the shortest one, so She's a little tougher than me, but, uh, uh, but praise the Lord, uh, we were able to work there for two years and, um, uh, and whatnot, so um, after that, we got married, uh, just shortly after that, um, I think I came, ho- I, I came home and uh, got a job and uh, started working on a house, and so uh, that's where we're at now. We fixed up an old two-story farmhouse, and uh, how many people have ever done that? Fixed up an old farmhouse. Doesn't have to be two-story or nothing. Yes, it's, it's a blessing, amen? It's, uh, oh boy. And, and Leah can testify of that as well because she got to help. So anyway, she was recruited uh, to help laying block work and different things, anything to save money when you're young. Um, laying block work instead of spending the extra money on a foundation uh, takes like, you know, 10 times longer, but uh, we got it done, praise the Lord. And, uh, and so we've been serving the Lord there ever since. Um, and so we're just blessed to be here tonight, and uh, uh, I want to jump right into the lesson tonight. If you would turn to John chapter 14, and there'll be a lot of more questions, I, I know, and you can ask me after church tonight um, about uh, different things, right? Currently, as you, as you turn to John chapter 14, uh, my wife and I are both Sunday school teachers. She teaches the, the uh, girls, I teach the boys, and then we have a separate teen class for the teens. Uh, that taught by a youth leader, and so we're doing that. I song lead as well, and she, uh, she also is in the choir with me. Um, so it's, uh, it's amazing to see God work in and through us and through others as well in our church. And, uh, and I've, I've seen the facilities around here. It's amazing. 
what God's done here as well. Praise the Lord for everything that you see, and uh, it's only by, only by him that we see the growth that we, that we have in different churches like this one. So page, uh, John chapter 14, I'm used to saying, turn to page uh, in your hymnal to page 437. Uh, we're preaching from the Bible tonight. Uh, so John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. I'm going to grab a little water here. We're going to look at prayer tonight. We're going to look at uh, the privilege in prayer and some other things that we can uh, maybe just take some notes on. Maybe it's, maybe it's something you've heard before. I'm sure it has, it has been something you've heard before. But we're going to take a look at um, some of the things that we can take away from prayer and how it can help us in our spiritual growth. And um, just we'll go from there. And... Um, John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Jesus is speaking here. He says, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And we see, we're going we're gonna to break this down a little bit. This is just one of my um, key verses here. We're going to break this down throughout the service tonight. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, she shall, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And there's more to it than that. We're going to take a, look, a little bit deeper uh, dive into it tonight. And let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer before we go ahead and uh, go further into the message tonight. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, just thank you for uh, each and every one that came tonight to get uh, something from the Word of God, Lord, that they can uh, take home and, Lord, uh, Lord share it with others. We pray that souls would get saved tonight if there is a soul that, out there that uh, does not know as you as their Savior. We pray that they would come to that saving knowledge. Lord, we pray that uh, uh, if there's somebody outside of here that's not at church tonight that uh, we get a burden for, we'd go to them and, uh, Lord, just share the gospel with them, Lord, that, they, uh, that this would be the day of salvation and that they can come to know uh, you as their Savior, Lord. We pray that you would work in and through the message tonight, uh, Bible study slash uh, message for us through the word of prayer and uh, just defining that, Lord, just help us to, to work in our prayer lives, help us to uh, work in and through as we serve, uh, serve you from a day-to-day basis. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, page, uh, page, here we go again, 13 and 14, verse 13 and 14. So we look at these, we look at these words of Jesus, we see, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. I want to, uh, just kind of as an introduction, um, as I think of prayer, you think of, uh, this is a, a, key, a key communication that we have with God. Uh, this is the only way uh, that we talk to God as a Christian. That's, it's all basic, that's all basic for us. Uh, but this is, to me, one of the most untapped and most powerful tool in our day today when we talk about uh, the power of God, getting to the power of God, and using that power of God. It is the most, as far as I can see, the most untapped resource that we don't tap into. There are songs written about that in our hymnals as well that uh, we do not, uh, we should not take it lightly what we take to the Lord in prayer. We need to take everything to the Lord in prayer. Um, and I know that that's can be a huge list of things, but God does answer prayer. And when we, we see our daily task, I, I just thought about this the other day. Um, we, we go about our daily task. For me, uh, I, I try to I get up at five in the mornings, and I know a lot of you folks do uh, get up early as well. And just in 15 minutes, you can be on your way to work with all these different technologies that we have today. Uh, we have phones to wake us up. We have a microwave uh, to heat something up on the way to work. We have our toaster if you want toast. Uh, remote start on the car to start the car before we go. And all this can happen in 15 minutes. And, um, and all these different technologies that we have and mechanical means. Uh, we have a remote to unlock the car, a remote to start the car. We have a, a garage door opener to open the door to get the car out of the garage uh, before the cat suffocates in there from the fumes. And uh, so we have all these different technologies, and we use them. We use them on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, there's some times where it, it kind of bugs me when I know I've got something like that, and I can't find it. And it's like, there's a tech piece of technology. I need it right now, but I don't have it. And, and then I, now I've got to go unlock the door to the garage or whatever and get in there 
and uh, different things like that. And then you get out there and you forgot to grab the keys that were inside the house and the house is already locked, so you're in big trouble. Um, so we see these things, they, it can become a routine. And as we get into our routine, sometimes life gets so busy we almost forget to pray before we even leave the house or before uh, the day starts. And that's, that's something that we need to remember on a day-to-day basis, start our day out with prayer. Uh, and sometimes you'll, you'll sit back and look at your day and wonder why it went so bad. Why did things go so bad? Did you start out with prayer? Did you start out uh, before, perhaps, or before your feet even hit the floor with prayer? Did you start out that way, asking God to give you help? Um, I know uh, we, before we leave our driveway on the way to church, we pray that God would keep us safe. And uh, we had an incident the other day where the, um, I'm, I'm about half an hour away from our church, and our, my pastor called me, he says the air brakes on the bus are about ready to lock up, and I, need, I had to pull into a driveway. So he was very smart in doing that, and uh, before they completely locked up because he was losing air pressure. And I said, well, I'm about half an hour away, but I'll, I'll get over there as fast as I can. And uh, so I took mother-in-law's car, but uh, she doesn't know that. Well, she, she knows I took it. She don't know how fast I drove. But uh, anyway, so anyway, but praise the Lord, he, he, he keeps us safe on the roads. He kept all those kids on our bus safe the other day. Um, those brakes could have uh, made that bus come to a halt right in the middle of the road. Had uh, Pastor not thought about that and God had spoken to him to take that bus off the road and get, get on a safe ground. Um, so we see God answers prayer just in those things. And as you, as you listen to the sermon tonight, be thinking of those things, and maybe even after the service, be thinking of things that God's, and we're going to talk about that later uh, tonight at the end of the, serv- the, the sermon here, thinking about things that God has done in your life that answered your prayer requests. We forget them. We forget them from time to time. At, and in my Sunday school class, I'll tell the boy, well, we'll go through prayer requests, and uh, sometimes it's just, I need to get this tooth pulled or something simple, you know, as boys have those type of requests, but we put those as praises, and they see firsthand that God answers prayer. And a lot of, a lot of times, they're more serious things, like my aunt's pregnant. Okay, we need to pray for your aunt. And uh, these are five to uh, ten-year-old boys. Most, most of them are. And so they get to see that God answers prayer, and we'll have them on the right side of my, my board, left side's prayer request, and, and the right side will put praises. So we see that God answers prayer. Um, so to go through my introduction here, um, getting complacent in our prayers, as I was talking about just a few minutes ago, it's easy to do. We let life get in the way, and we can, uh, and we can let that from time to time slide and happen. But as Christians, we need to protect and guard our prayer time with God as though it is the main line to the throne of Jesus. And then a question mark in my mind, wait, it is the main line that we communicate to the throne of Jesus, to the throne of God. So we need to keep that main line open. We need to keep it always flowing. God wants to hear us pray to him. God wants our prayer requests. Sometimes we think we might be a hindrance to God, and that is not, not the case at all. Uh, we'll look at some verses tonight. So that's, I just wanted to share that with you. We'll go through some verses to, to back that up. We'll be taking a closer look at what God has told us to do with this untapped line of communication called our prayer life. Uh, so we see John 14, 13 through 14. And Jesus is speaking here. He said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, and that's important, I'm going to look at that later, that, we, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So um, some folks, uh, I work with a lot of Catholic background type people, and uh, they're, they're kind of learning more about me as I, as I just moved to a new department, and they're getting to learn more about the Christian lifestyle. Um, there's a couple towns that are north of us. They're very heavily Catholic, and um, I, I, I want to ask them sometimes. I say, if I put if, if Baptist Church went in place there, would you come? I think they might, because uh, they they are um, they are grandsons and uh, whatnot of, uh, of of their ancestors that had gone to Catholic churches, and they don't at, at the time. They do not right now. And so their faith is wavering in their, in their belief that, of the Catholicism. So it's a good, it's a good time that I can uh, minister to them and, and try to pick their brains a little bit and just give them some questions to think upon in, uh, out of Scripture. But uh, one of the things that as a young Christian, you might think, how do we know that God is listening? 
And we'll be skipping through some verses here shortly, uh, just as a general statement, because he knows our thoughts and hears us when we speak to him. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 65, if you would, and you can, you can hold your page there in John chapter 14. Isaiah 65, 24, it shows us clearly that, that God hears us when we pray and, that he, uh, and when we speak to him as well. John, uh, Isaiah 65, verse 24 Isaiah 65, 24. And these are just a few promises that God's given us uh, to uh, strengthen our prayer life. Isaiah 65, 24. And it says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And so we see here that He knows our thoughts. He knows before we even call upon him, that he's going to answer that request. Whether it's a yes or no, that might be a different story. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. We see that God already knows what we are because he is uh, all-knowing all and all-powerful. We see that he already knows what we're going to ask him. And so he's just waiting for us to call upon him. And so we see that. We see, I, uh, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And uh, we must, uh, as we uh, further look into these studies, um, here's another statement I'm going to uh, put out there from some scripture. We must be living godly lives, keeping his commandments, and, leave, and live pleasing as unto the Lord. Um, as you see in, in John chapter 14, verse 13 through 14, we see that God said, or Jesus said, that who, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. And uh, we see those verses there. I'm going to skip forward to 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. And this says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Um, I heard a pastor say before that it's always better uh, to, to not backslide and to not uh, get off track with our prayer life so much um, that we uh, lose sight of Jesus and that we have to uh, come back to him in a, in a manner that normally we wouldn't. And uh, I'm trying to get to that point here in a minute. Um, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. It's always better to keep his commandments and to do those things that are pleasing in his sight on a continuous basis. And he'll be always there listening uh, for us in time of need. Now that's not to say that, uh, you know, uh, somebody gets wayward and gets into um, some sin nature. That's not to say that God won't listen to them when they ask him uh, in prayer to do something in their lives. But it is good that we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We need to, we need to do those things so that he will uh, uh, hear us and that we will be more in the will of God and that he will always be there. But uh, Matthew chapter 6 uh, is another uh, good context of verses uh, talking about prayer. Be, uh, verse, verse 8 of chapter 6, be, ye, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what thing ye have need of before ye ask him. If you want to go right on over there, and uh, you can put a marker there, too, if you'd like, because I think we're going to be there t two or three times. Um, Matthew chapter 6, I'll give you a second to get over there. Matthew chapter 6. And God wants us, God wants us to have a continuous prayer life with him. He doesn't want us to fall into that sin nature and uh, let the devil get a hold of us. He wants us to be with him all the time constantly uh, looking up to him for whatever it may be that we are looking for uh, to fulfill his will. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. And I'm gonna, I might back up to, uh, this is, this is uh, talking about prayer in verse 5 as well. When thou prayest, let's go back to verse 5 if you would in chapter 6. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. 
And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Um, so within these few verses, we see that, uh, you know, we're not doing this to please men or please ourselves. We are doing it, and we ought to do it in secret. And, um, you know, when he says openly, that, that doesn't mean us praying up here. Uh, he's talking about the hypocrites that are out in the streets looking for attention, looking for attention to themselves and standing, uh, love to pray standing in the synagogues, but rather go into that closet and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, in verse number six. And, that, that, and then you'll see the rewards openly after that. In verse seven, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask of him. So once again, verse eight, that's what I was kind of pinpointing this toward. He knows our needs before we even ask him. But he wants to see us communicate with him. He wants to see us. Uh, we are servants of God, and we ought to be in need of him. And um, I'm going to continue on, and we'll talk about that here, I think, here in a second. I tried to get all this lined up so that it, it makes sense uh, through the scriptures as we go. Um, but also, um, we are going to see... Not only do we need to be obedient, we, need to, we, we know that God is listening because the Bible says it a few different times there, and that's just a few, that's just a, a snapshot of some verses that we see. God is always listening. He knows our thoughts before we even speak them. And here's another thing, uh, that uh, number two, we must go further than prayer, and we need to believe what we're asking, not, not just uh, praying out of rep repetition, as it says in verse, uh, I believe, number seven. Um, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions. Um, this is something that I'm working uh, in, in my Sunday school class currently. Uh, we have bus kids that are new, and my kids are, need to understand that as well. Uh, they say, well, he's doing something bad. I said, well, that's okay, because he's, he's a bus kid, and, and sometimes uh, as you bring bus kids in, they don't know what church is even about. They have no clue how to act, or what prayer is, or anything of, of that matter. <clears throat> so I tell the kids, that's okay, but be there by their side and help them understand that uh, we have a God that we serve, and we, this, the Bible is what we stand upon, and uh, just try to pay attention through the class. But uh, as we pray, we need to believe what we're asking, that he will answer. And whether that's a yes or no, that, that's a different story. And uh, sometimes when my littlest one, if you tell him no, he, he'll sit on a chair and just break down and cry. And uh, I say, hey, it's okay. It's just a stick of gum. It's not the end of the world, you know, or whatever it may be he m might be in need of. Uh, he's very uh, emotional. Now, if he gets in trouble, he'll admit it right off the bat. Well, most of the time. And uh, so, but he's, and my other, my oldest one's very stubborn, very opposite. Uh, he, you know, he, he will not shed a tear until the last second and anyway so they're very polar opposites but they they get along pretty good for the most part once again but uh, so we see that uh, we, more than just praying more than just well th this is my five minute prayer time I'm going to lift up my prayer request to God I'm going to you know pray for the people in the church and different things we need to believe that God will answer them because he will he will answer them whether it is a yes or no that we cannot be upset over uh, I see that in my son. He can be upset over a, a no answer. But if we act like that as a child of God, uh, that is really not our position. That's up to God whether he wants to answer that as a, as a yes answer or a no answer. So I, I uh, just, I've got to cover up my bases here. When a child asks from his mother or father for something he wants or needs, the parent, parents answer to the child is either a yes or no, or maybe not right now. Maybe later. The child's response should not be returned with anger uh, if, they do not, if they do not get what they had desired for. And let's go to Matthew 21, if you would. Uh, Matthew 21, 22. Matthew 21, 22. And there's a whole lot more in prayer that we can, uh, we can look at. We're just kind of touching some bases here. Uh, some basic verses. Chapter 21 of Matthew, verse 22, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, 
believing ye shall receive. So that one word, I mean, if you took that one word out, that's a lot to take out of that verse. Uh, we wouldn't, definitely wouldn't want to do that because everything, is, everything in the word of God is inspired. Amen? And so verse 22, believing ye shall receive. Uh, I think as a teenager, you know, um, and, and, and when I went to Bible college, a lot, you, it opens your eyes to other people that are trying to do the same thing, serve the Lord. And um, it really opened my eyes um, just to see the goodness of people and that they're trusting in God to do something for them. And, and that's what we ought to do when we pray. We need to trust in God that he's actually, because we know he can do things. He's, we've, if, we are forgetful in nature. We are forgetful of things that, you know, maybe a, a, a relative that uh, has had cancer and got over it and survived. We forget about those things. We forget about how good God has been to us. And we see he provides for our needs. I can't name one time when he hasn't provided for our needs, my wife and I. I mean, there was, time, there was a time when we first got married, we didn't have much. Uh, I remember on our honeymoon, we were stopping at the, uh, we had a rental car down in Pennsylvania, and uh, we didn't have any money to pay the, pay the um, I'm, I'm missing the word. We didn't have any money to pay the tolls, that's what I'm looking for. And so she was out there uh, picking up, you know, quarters and stuff off the ground. That's, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> But praise the Lord, we made it back. I don't know how we put gas in the tank, but anyway, uh, somehow that we managed. Uh, praise the Lord, he provided. But um, anyway, and, and through all that, and, and uh, another side note too, as, as talking about God providing, we got married in a week. I had one more week of, uh, I had a seasonal job, and I, they bumped me up to a full-time job. And, um, and so I took it, and it was working for the same people in a different location, and so I took the full-time job. I said, why not? I got a family I got to think about now. I just got married. And so I moved over there for a few months. And it was a slow season. We all kind of seen it coming, I guess. Um, 08 and 09 were bad years. And that's when we got married. Uh, perfect time. Uh, just as far as the economy goes and whatnot. But, uh, but it showed that God provided. I, I worked one more week after our honeymoon. And I uh, got my last paycheck. So... Uh, that wasn't too nice to them, but they, they, we knew people were getting laid off, so uh, we had that knowledge. But, but God provided jobs for me through the winter and different things, and in the spring I got uh, the job that I have now that I've had for 12 years. Uh, so God's provided uh, through that. And so we see that, that he always, uh, when we get down on our knees, he will answer our prayers in, in the most amazing way. Uh, so we see all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing. We need to believe that he will take care of us. We don't need to just believe in our, in our boss to give us the next paycheck, uh, but to believe in God that he will provide that job and keep continuing to provide that job for us so we can have food on our table and be able to pay our bills and what, whatever, whatever else may come along uh, financially. So we see that believing. We need to believe that God's going to do something and do a, work, do a work when we pray. And that can go outside. Uh, if it, we can get that instilled in our families. We can get that instilled in the church house. We, can, uh, we see God's amazing hand here that through answered prayers and hours and hours of, of praying and on our knees for God to provide facilities here or the help here or what, whatever it may be. So, uh, th and this is just part of our faith. I think of this as, uh, you take a bigger sit back and take a bigger picture at this this was just part of our faith just part of it remembering what the definition of faith is we see that in 11 uh, hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so we see that this is just part of our simple uh and it's very simple faith um we were talking i don't know who i was talking to the other day that uh we were out uh, soul winning on saturday and i was out with a, a different gentleman and God, uh, God had, we had met up with a lady that uh, she just uh, had all kinds of different thoughts. But, uh, but we had a good conversation with her. And that gentleman I was put with, he, he was ready to backfire uh, some good doctrine to her in a good way. Uh, and we were able to walk away and, 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 and be at peace and not be, you know, to have had a, just had a fist fight or nothing like that. Um, but I think of him, we were talking about, we were talking about how, 
how much faith would you need, him and I were talking as we were walking from door to door, how much faith would you need to be an atheist and believe that all this just appeared out of nothing? That would take a lot more than what our simple Christian faith is. Uh, God can just do whatever he wants in our prayers. He'll, he'll, he can just, he, I mean, he'll just take something small and make it more amazing than we'd ever imagined some, in many cases. And so my wife's a perfect example of that. So uh, I've been praying for her since I was 10 or so. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was little, I prayed for God to send the right one. And so praise the Lord, uh, he did. So I just praise him for that. But in, in uh, another verse of comfort, uh, as we think about believing in, in the fact that God can help us through uh, these different trials as we pray, believing that he's going to answer prayer, John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Of course, that's Jesus speaking there. John chapter 14, verse 1, Believe in God, believe also in me. Um, as he was ministering to people, he was trying to get them to understand that he's part of the Trinity. He's part of uh, God, God is my Father, and uh, you pray through me to God. And so he was trying to get them to understand that as he was teaching them. And I'll, I'll try to wrap up here. I think i got to be done shortly. Um, so if we are praying and not believing that God can answer prayer, if we are praying and not believing, well, then we're just wasting our time with the Lord. It only makes sense in our Christian faith that we put our trust in God and that he will do what he says in his timing. Uh, faith is a huge part in the belief of the Christian. Uh, without faith, it says it, w w what happens without faith. You're wondering what, what happens without our simple Christian faith. Hebrews 11.6, 6, uh, in the same context that we talk about faith, um, you see Hebrews 11.6, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that dil diligently seek him. So it's, it, it promises that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek, seek him. So are you, you know, as, you're, as you continue your prayer life, are you diligently seeking him from a day-to-day -day basis? And then another, uh, I want to hit this real quick before we wrap up, because this is important. Uh, number three, what are we to pray through? And this is something that I noticed uh, I've been doing it a lot more often lately, praying through the name of Jesus. John 14, 13, 13 through 14, the, our key verse tonight, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I said we we're going to break that down a little bit, that will, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So Jesus is speaking here. He says, you, you ought to ask it in my name. So we always, you know, many folks open in a word of prayer in Jesus' name or end in a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Whatsoever, you sh this is in John chapter 16, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Another key verse, John chapter 16, verse 23 through 24. Uh, let's go ahead and go over there. Uh, I feel like I'm trying to hustle. I, I don't want to stay too late tonight. Uh, tonight's a school night, I guess, so i got to get used to that. Homeschooling, there is no school night, I don't think. I'm just kidding. John chapter 16, verse 23 through, through 24. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. So here's uh, another key verse saying, Ask, in, the, ask in, in Jesus' name for whatever you may be in need of. We see it as important to see that we should, pr uh, that we should pray in Jesus' name. And also in Zechariah 13, 9, they, they, I'm sorry, they shall call on my name. Zechariah 13, 9. And then lastly, I'll wrap up here, uh, try to uh, wrap this up. We have confidence in the power of prayer. We can have, we can have confidence in the power of prayer. We believe, we, we, we've seen, we, we need to believe that God can do a work. We can, we can also have confidence in the power of prayer. In 1 John 5, 14 through 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, notice according to his will, uh, you, can't, you ain't going to be able to sit there and pray uh, something that God is not going to have his hand over and expect him to answer that. Uh, so we see we need to ask anything according to his will. He heareth us. 
And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And uh, if you know anything about construction, I do a little bit of construction. I think of petitions, I think of walls. And uh, that's, what, that's just what you do when you think of, when you're a construction type worker, you think of putting up walls. But this, this Bible definition of petition is a request made for something desired, especially a respectful or humble request as to a superior or to one of those in authority uh, or a supplication or prayer. So we see that we... Uh, that uh, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desired of him. So we can have confidence. We can have confidence that we, the, the, in this confidence that we have of him, we can ask anything according to his will and he will hear us. And then uh, I just want to uh, just kind of go over some highlights of uh, tonight's uh, lesson or sermon or whatever you may want to call it. Um, just to helping us have a better prayer life. We can, and there was more I was going to go over, but we're kind of running out of time. Uh, so having a personal prayer time, this can help us in our, to better our prayer life. Uh, and also our family prayer time, church prayer meetings, attend them. I think it's important. And uh, that shows God what is first in our lives. Make a time to assemble as a family to pray with a prayer list from your local church. I said make a time. A lot of times set aside a time is hard. You know, make a time. I put it in bold letters. Make a time. Set, set things aside and open up a spot, if you don't have one already, to make a time to assemble as a family to pray with a prayer list from your local church. Um, as I think about the prayer list from our local church, I try to always have pens on me and always, uh, as I'm, I'm usually sitting up at the front with our pastor, writing down the prayer request because um, that lets people know that you're taking note and that we are praying, you know, take them home and pray for the people in your church. Pray for those that are sick. I tell the kids, my kids all the time, pray for somebody else. Because I'm sure that if you were sick, you would, want them to, uh, you would want them to pray for you as well. So let's uh, continue to keep that prayer list with you. Um, I've got this one. It's not all marked up yet. But um, keep our prayer list with us and, and take that time to, to pray for each other. Write down updates every week. Uh, praises. Uh, what's going on with Mrs. So-and-so? Um, we had a gentleman leave for Tennessee for the winter because uh, up in Michigan, they don't stay around there all the time. Uh, they go down to Florida and places that are warm. Uh, so anyway, we had a gentleman that left. We did not know. We, we for sure, well, we weren't for sure, but we figured he would come back in the spring. And uh, he went on to be with his Lord and Savior in Tennessee. And so... Uh, but we were praying for him. He had uh, different. He was a veteran, and uh, had different leg uh, complications. And I believe he was going through a procedure to get some of that fixed, and ended up uh, getting an infection and, and passed away. Uh, but we prayed for him through that time, and God decided to take him home to heaven. So praise. But praise the Lord, he was saved. He knew where he was going, and so we just praise the Lord for that. And the time we had together with him, uh, we were able to fellowship with him. Uh, it was a sweet time. So. And also, uh, lastly, also write down the answers. I, I kind of said that. Write down the answers to prayers from the past to help us remember what God has done for us uh, in the future as we pray, we think about those things in the past. So let's, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I think that's all I was going to cover tonight. I was getting late, later at night here. So um, I just thank you, for, thank you for having us tonight. And uh, just hopefully these will be a help to you. I know they were a help to me and uh, keeping continuing on with our prayer life. Uh, it's important. It's important. It's important in each other's lives. It's import important in our own families and our own lives. And uh, God answers prayer. I remember uh, my grandparents started a Bible camp. Real quick, I'll be done. They started a Bible camp back in the 60s up there, uh, right around about two miles from my house. And so uh, there was one pulpit that said, prayer changes things right in the front of it. And I always remembered that. I think it's still there. It's probably, uh, it was always down by the lakeside, so it's probably all, you know, weather beaten and everything. It's underneath a chapel, so it's not all uh, indoors or nothing, but it said prayer changes things, and uh, we need to use that. We need to use that to our advantage. It's a, it's, it's a communication that God wants us to keep open with him. He wants to know our needs. He wants to know our thoughts and what we have need of him. Uh, so let's keep that in mind uh, tonight. Hopefully that's a help to y'all uh, tonight, and uh, we'll You'll be hearing more from me this week, sadly. No, I'm just kidding. Hopefully. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be a blessing, will be a blessing to you while we're here. I know you've all been a blessing to us already. And so let's go ahead and uh, I'll close in a word of prayer. I'll give it over to Brother Colin, uh, but I'll close and I'll let him uh, take over the service tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, just thank you for these promises in the Word of God. Lord, just thank you for the power of prayer, Lord. We just see uh, there's so many more examples in uh, Old and New Testament of uh, folks that you used in Bible times, Lord, to answer that you, the prayers that you answered uh, through them. Lord, just help us as we uh, continue uh, our journey. Help us to, um, Lord, just get on our knees more often than we have in the past. And Lord, use that uh, main source uh, to communicate to you. And Lord, that you would answer our prayer requests, we pray. And uh, Lord, help us to believe in that and help us to uh, really uh, understand that you are the most powerful God. You can do whatever uh, you see fit in, in the will. And uh, we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate that um, message, Levon. We're going to go ahead and have a word of a time of prayer, and um, just just to mention a few of the folks on our prayer list, and then we'll just take some time to pray for those. You can come down forward in the altar as the music plays, or you could uh, pray with your loved one in your in your pew. But uh, there are a lot of people, a lot of people that are in need tonight. We're here sitting upright in a pew, and there's people laying flat in a bed somewhere, hospital bed. And they've got loved ones that are moments away from crossing over into eternity, sick, hurting, you name it. There's a lot of people that need our prayer tonight. Just want to name the couple. Continue to pray for Miss Elaine Hand as she recovers. Uh, Dr. Ray's sister, Sandra, she got in a car accident and she's still recovering from her broken bones. Um, Ernest Nichols, recovering from a stroke. Miss Longworth's grandsons, Riker and Christopher. Homer Brewington, Mrs. Wooster's. Um, father who was injured, and Becky Nichols, Robert Bruce, um, Josh King with his tumor on his esophagus, Tim Lapato's dad that has Alzheimer's and, and uh, financial problems. Also, we have Carrie Waltemeyer's niece that's having headaches and dizziness. They don't know why, and it's pleased to be with her, or pray for her. Her name is Shannon McDonald. And, and then another a mother in our school, Marista Jensen, uh, she's gotten some uh, pretty negative test results back, and she's waiting to see what comes next, and so many others on our prayer list. So uh, as the music plays, you can come forward and pray for these, these people on, our, on our, our request list and pray where you are in your seats, but just a big thing is just pray. Uh, pray, he made a good point, pray like it was you on the prayer list, and pray like it was you that got a bad report from a doctor's visit and just Lift these names up to the Lord as we pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe as we gather together tonight in church. Well, Lord, we're thankful for um, keeping the Hague family safe as they're with us tonight. I uh, just pray that you would just continue to speak through him to us as he preaches some messages on Sunday. Lord, please be at the cantata. A lot of work and dedication has been put into that. And we, we do that, Lord, to get the gospel out in song. 
And we pray that folks would uh, invite each other, invite their other loved ones and neighbors and co-workers there, that they might hear the gospel and get saved, Lord. I pray that you would bless us with a wonderful service this Sunday. And Lord, please just be with all these folks on the prayer list, Lord. So many, so many names to name, Lord. I don't want to leave anybody out. But Lord, please be with uh, Miss Hand as she recovers and she heals from her her uh, injuries and things like that, Lord, a brain bleed. I pray that you would help her to have a complete recovery. Help us as a church family to do what we can to meet those needs, bringing her meals and offering her words of encouragement, praying for. And Lord, please be with um, the Longworth's grand grandsons, Riker and Christopher. I pray that you just touch their bodies and heal them up, Lord. And please be with Homer Brewington as he continues to recover. I pray that you would touch his body and help him not to have any complications or any further injuries, Lord. Just please be with uh, Josh King as he's dealing with a tumor on his esophagus, Lord. I pray that you would just be with him, help the procedure to do what it's supposed to, and uh, just limit its growth and movement, Lord. I pray that it would just be completely resolved. I pray that he wouldn't have any complications and uh, you get him back to 100% to his family. Lord, please be with uh, those that are sick with the the sickness that's going around the school and around the area right now, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be with all those save, unsaved loved ones that we have on our prayer list, Lord. Just please speak to their hearts and draw them to a saving knowledge of you. And please be with Ernest Nichols as he recovers from his stroke. Tim Lapato's dad as he's dealing with Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's, Lord, I pray you'd be with his mother as she tries to tend to his needs and Please strengthen her and help her not to get discouraged. I pray that you be with all the all the, the needs that we have in our list, Lord. And I may have forgotten a few, Lord, but you know exactly who they are, what they need. And Lord, we're asking this in accordance to your will. God, please have your will and your way. And just touch and heal where needed. Keep us safe as we go our separate ways. Help us, the kids and teachers and staff as they gather together for school tomorrow. Lord, bless the rest of this week. We love you. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. And Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday morning at, at, for Sunday school at 10 a.m. And uh, make plans to stay for the ice cream social after the evening service. And be thinking about some questions to ask uh, Levon or Rebecca during our question and answer time. And also, please be in prayer. Um, after their visit, we're going to be voting on them uh, May 1st, May 1st, Sunday evening, so be in prayer for that. All right, that's all I have. Did I miss any announcements? Anything, anything to mention that I missed? All right, well, God bless you. Have a great night.